Everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to start a garden. For those of you guys who are interested in growing your own food this year, wanna have your own vegetable garden, this is the video for you. And if you already know how to do this, share this with a friend. Maybe somebody who is thinking about it, doesn't really know what to do, needs to be a bit inspired. This is a really easy process. Like anything in life, I have a, I just feel like it's always more daunting thinking about it. When you actually start to do it and you start getting all those little pieces that put together into the larger picture, it's just really simple and you think back and you're like, why did I ever have any doubt or anxiety over doing this particular thing? So uh, a garden, it doesn't get any easier for that. So share that with the people that are interested. And this is the garden bed that I actually created about a month and a half ago. What we had done is we just selected some land. We put down some cardboard. You can get cardboard anywhere. A lot of times it comes to us in the mail through Amazon. Um, you could just be saving cardboard as you go and just put down cardboard on the ground, somewhere on the grass. Doesn't really matter. Just pick out a spot. We'll talk about where you should put it in a moment. But the basics are very simple. We put down the cardboard. On top of that, we put some straw or some wood chips, some kind of material. What that does is the cardboard and the mulch is going to break down the grass. It's gonna kill the grass. You're not gonna to have to come in here with tools, dig around, really spend the whole day getting rid of all this grass. It's gonna be a lot of effort. Just put down the cardboard and the grass will die um, at this time of the year, sometime within two weeks. It really is pretty quick. Um, also, once we did that, we essentially just put down some soil. And the soil is really the most important part of a garden bed. I know people say this all the time, and if you've been listening to garden videos, you're just now new to this, you're gonna hear this a lot. But it is true, and it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> Until you really start getting into this, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But the whole objective here is to have a soil. What I have here is compost. I would recommend getting yourself either compost or worm castings. And this stuff holds water really well. It also drains water really well. If that makes that makes no sense at all. But essentially, our native soil here, you can kind of see it, is clay. And if I were to dig this up, it literally would be like clay from arts and class, or arts and uh, your art class in school. So that's too much water. This thing holds a ton of water. So what we need to do, because our garden bed, our vegetables, our annual vegetables, are really not the most easiest thing to grow, if we give them the right soil, they're gonna thrive. And that's exactly what the main objective is of this video, is to get you guys thinking about the soil. For me, in my climate, we get about 40 inches of rain here every year so for me i don't have to actually water this believe it or not what i could do is because now everything's really growing things have started to warm up these are my cool loving crops by the way these are the crops that love the cooler temperatures but what i could do to help conserve moisture and really guarantee that i don't have to come out here and water one little bit is i could put down some straw or some wood chips. And what this mulch material does, any mulch, it could be leaves, that's gonna sit on top of the soil and it's gonna basically block the sun from beating down on the soil. It's gonna help prevent transpiration. It's gonna keep the water in the soil. And by doing that, and really depends on where you guys live. If you live in a drier climate, like California, Arizona, you definitely wanna have some kind of material down here so you don't have to come out here every single day and water this. For me, I only have really one bed with mulch on it. You can see these are my other garden beds over here. And this guy, this bed here has something called rice holes on top. And that's basically what's left over from rice. When you harvest rice, this is the exterior shell of the rice. And that basically sits here on top of the soil, conserves so much moisture in addition to all the rain we get and in addition to the fabulous soil 
that I have put down in these garden beds, because it was compost, because it was worm castings, it's holding the right amount of moisture. The biggest reason why plants die is either too much water or not enough water. So if we can solve that problem at the soil level, that is going to be your key. All right, so hopefully that makes sense, is that we're getting a soil that's gonna naturally hold the right amount of water so that our plants can thrive. Now, let's talk about where you're gonna put this. We talked about how to do this, right? You just put down the cardboard, put down the wood chips or the straw, and then throw on some compost on top of that. What I would recommend is finding yourself a spot in the yard, whether it's your backyard, maybe you have a farm, maybe you just have a really small area to grow in, think about where the grass grows really well. If the grass grows really well there, this is probably a decent spot for growing a garden or starting a garden. If I come over here, I know historically, because I've spent enough time in my yard, I know that the grass really doesn't grow very well up here on this little berm that we've created. You can see all these weeds. You can see a lot of bare soil. The grass really doesn't do well here. So putting in a garden on this little hill would be a horrible idea. The fertility there, just by knowing that, is pretty bad. So if the grass is growing well, it's pretty much a guarantee that your vegetables are gonna do pretty well. But you wanna pay attention to the sun. What we have here, because we're in the northern hemisphere of the earth, we need to make sure that we are on or having a garden on the south side of a house or the south side of a structure, this is gonna guarantee that we have sun all day. So if we have sun all day, we're getting the right amount of sun, we're getting that eight hours of sun, you can come out here in your backyard, measure this out. You can stand here and just think about, oh, well, the sun's highest point in the sky right now, it's midday, so clearly this is the south side, this is probably getting the most amount of sun in this location, right? Now, if you're on the west side, that also is pretty decent for some vegetables. The west side has a warmer sun, it helps with flowering, it helps with fruiting, and there's also a lot of it at that time of the day, in the afternoon. So, think about that. Think about the direction of, of the, the garden bed that it's facing. Is it facing the south? Is it facing the west? What you wouldn't wanna do is put your garden bed on the north side of the house. That's a horrible idea because the north side of your house really doesn't get any sun. So that's really the biggest issues that you're kind of kind of want to have to worry about is really does your garden bed get the appropriate amount of sun? Also, is it in an area that's getting enough water? It's possible that your garden bed's in a ditch. It's getting too much water. Maybe it's too high above ground and all that water is draining away. You want a nice little flat level surface you may have to come in here and level it out, but really it's all coming down to that cardboard, putting down that cardboard, which will break down, those, that mulch, which will break down, and then throwing layers of compost or worm castings on top. I have at least four inches of compost on top of my garden beds. You can see this was a raised bed that we had put in just to edge out the bed. You can do this as well. You know, create the size of the bed that you want. This is 10 foot by three foot, and this just holds in that soil. But I know because this raised bed is about four inches tall, that I've put in about four inches worth of compost, and it's kind of sunken down every year. But that was the original goal, and that was the original fertility that I added to this bed. So think about it. You know, if you're not inspired at this point, I really do believe this is just so, so simple. We've done many videos, by the way, creating these, show you guys how to do that, you know, laying down the cardboard, laying down the, that mulch, and then putting the compost on top. It's really super, super simple. It's just a matter of finding the place and finding the materials that you can put down. And what I wanna show you now, if you're not convinced, we already have some radishes early in the season. This is a French breakfast radish. There's nothing better than coming into your garden and picking your own food. Now, if I take a bite of this, it's gonna be the best radish, seriously, I've ever had. Now, a radish historically is very zesty, very strong. This is not, very sweet, 
It's very juicy. It does have that zest, but it's pleasant. I can eat these radishes raw. And if I come in here to the snap peas, I may be able to find myself a snap pea. Here's one right here. These are sugar snap peas. These are incredible garden treats early in the season. These are so sweet, it's unreal. Oh my God. So good. That was my first one of the year. I've been craving them for a long time. Here we have another thing down here called Mizuna. Mizuna is a Japanese style lettuce that is more along the mustard green family. We can just pick off some of these leaves and eat them raw. Really, really good. We've got ourselves pretty much salad we can make ourselves today if we wanted with all this stuff down in here. <clears throat> we have spinach, we have arugula, we have carrots in here. This is all the cool loving crops that you can grow at this time of the year with very little effort. And what I'd recommend you guys pick because it's so it's it's getting a bit late in the season now. Well, really it's not because you still have in my area, you still have at least a month and a half, two months away before you could still consider planting some heat loving crops. The heat loving crops are things like eggplants, tomatoes, peppers, melons, you know, all those different more tropical Mediterranean things that are a bit difficult to grow here. But tomatoes are so easy that I would just recommend going to the hardware store, getting some tomato plants and sticking them in the ground. It's really, really that simple. You can look up plant spacing, you can look up potential problems that these plants may have. But otherwise, it's so, so easy. You guys are gonna have a real successful garden if you follow the steps that I laid out. Make sure it's in full sun. Create the bed in the correct way. And it's really just becomes so much easier if you start out on the right, the right foot. All right, guys, I hope this point was driven into your head. <laughs> I hope this made sense. We're gonna, uh, hopefully you guys can share this potentially if you haven't already with someone that is interested in uh, starting a garden this year. We are doing, by the way, a whole little garden series, 250 days of gardening, we're calling it. There's a nice little playlist that has been started on YouTube. You can go and watch that playlist that really has been detailing not just this point, but much further uh, before this, and how we started a lot of, a lot of our plants indoors, how we seeded all this, how we transplanted some of these plants, really from step A to Z. All right, so I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much for watching. See you for tomorrow's video.